Hello everyone! I just got back from my Disney vacation and I'm having trouble with it ending. I don't want it to end, but it has to. And today I have some Your Next Stamp goodies. This is an older set called Fabu Less Halloween. I love it. We're going to take this stencil. This is how I store my stencils, by the way, in this binder. This um, is a Simple Stories binder, and I label each sheet so that I know where the stencil came from. This one happens to be Echo Park. We are going to use it to create a background of sorts. I'm choosing a dark gray paper for my background and I decided it was going to be Paper Tray Inks Smoky Shadow. It's a very dark, dark gray, warm gray. And I'm taping it down with my Thermoweb purple tape. I love this stuff. It is fabulous. I use it all the time. And I'm going to use it to tape it down both my stencil and my piece of paper. Where are my makeup sponges? Why would you ask me? On what planet do you think that I would have some type of knowledge as to where you would have put makeup sponges? Why did you put it in this drawer, in Tim? Your craft room? Don't worry, we love getting on each other's nerves. So I use the makeup sponges and this uh, deco foil transfer gel. Um, you can either spoon it on with this um, stencil tool. <clears throat> but I like to put it in the lid and then take a makeup sponge, put it on the end of the sponge, and then dab it on just like you were dabbing on any other kind of ink or substance. I feel like this gives me a pretty good coverage. What? You want me to open this? Mm hmm For me. No. 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 I said no. He has reason for concern. Anyway, this is what it looks like. It looks pretty terrible. We're gonna <laughs> let this dry for a little bit. Um, I just let it dry for a few minutes. It will actually be dry to the touch when it's ready to use. And you're getting some glitter paper for a moon. Mm -hmm. Moons don't glitter. Everything glitters. You can put glitter on These are the two types of white glitter paper that I own. One is by Tonic Studios on the left, and the other is by Lawn Fawn, brand new, Pixie Dust. And that's what we're gonna play with today. I'm cutting it down slightly because I don't need a full sheet. I'm using the Your Next Stamp Black Olive ink. This is Copic friendly ink, and I'm stamping the bat from the Your Next Stamp Fabulous stamp set. And we're gonna do some Copic coloring, but first, I want more than one bat. So I'm just turning my paper around, not moving my stamp at all in my Misty, and just moving the paper and then flipping it over even to get actually four stamped bats, okay? I don't find that there's a right side up and a wrong side up with the cardstock. I don't know. I don't care, I'll use it whichever way. So let's do some Copic coloring here of these bats. If you do not enjoy watching other people color, you can skip ahead to four minutes and 40 seconds of this video and you will skip it. But it's really stupid simple this time, folks. Like it's just black, but I still made a color map in case you guys are interested in pinning it. But I just colored them black with little pink noses and some pink on their ears and I used like 110 and the scene upper C's to color them black. That is it. And I, you know, one side was darker shadow, tried to give it a little bit of dimension. Um, I'm not very good at that. I'm not a trained artist. So I just kind of color it the way I see it. And sometimes that's crazy, but it's okay. It's all in good fun. So now that I've colored my bats, I need to use the coordinating dies to cut them out. I have the Your Next Stamp snips. These are great. I have just cheap Harbor Freight ones, and but the, the nose of them is really quite thick and these are really thin and they get in there in those little spots really easily. Um, I'm taping down my coordinating die for my bats and I am gonna cut out three of the four bats that I colored. This is what they ended up looking like. I think they turned out super cute. 
I don't know, you could color your bats any color you want. Um, the bats that I did on the stencil are dry now, so let's pull out the mink machine and do some foiling some shiny foiling so the switch is right here on the back you turn it on and then you heat it up to the correct level uh that's supposed to be for your technique that you're using i don't know what level i'm supposed to use so i put it on four okay probably should look that up but now i'm using this glossy black uh that happens to be cut to the size i need patting myself on the back for that but then you just roll the stuff back up and hold it in the tube and then I throw it in my basket. Score! It's super simple to store them. Uh, if you have a more unique way of storing them, please let me know below in the comments because I'm at a loss. I'm sticking this into my carrier sheet that has seen better days. This is a common theme for things in my craft room, as you can see. Um, and then I'm feeding it through. This is the 12 inch mink machine, the larger one. And I did speed this up because it takes a really long time and I'm not going to make you sit through that. Anyway, when you pull it out, okay, it's hot. So be careful with the top of that machine. It is hot to the touch. I'm going to take it out of the carrier sheet and reveal to you the batty background. So stunning. <laughs> I love it. So what do you think I'm going to do next? If you could guess, pull out the stitched rectangle second from largest by your next stamp. Well, you can pat yourself on the back because that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm covering it with a piece of copy paper because my plates need to be replaced and I don't want to put any marks in that foil. So I'm just using it to protect my foiled background. Um, it does a good job at that. So, and then I used one of the stitched and pierced circles um, to cut out a moon, a full moon from my background. And then I'm using the Lawn Fawn Pixie Dust glitter paper uh, to put behind that. And we're gonna make a shaker card. But first, I have the Dripping Goo Edge Die by Your Next Stamp, and I'm using that to cut the bottom of my card panel. I love this idea. I think it's so fun. I hope you like it too. I think it adds a little bit of something extra. Now we need a sentiment. Hmm. So I'm taking the you are and the frightfully fun from the same your next stamp fabulous fabulous Halloween and I'm stamping that right directly onto my Simon Says Stamp fog card base. I'm prepping it with my EK Success powder tool. We're gonna use VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. I did stamp it twice to get a good crisp image for my, <clears throat> I dropped the Misty right there. Yes, I'm so professional. I dropped it. <laughs> and we're gonna use, uh, this is Hero Arts uh, Clear Embossing Powder. And we're gonna heat that up perfectly. The paper did warp a little bit, but with a little bit of massage, it went right back to behaving properly like a good card base does. So now I'm taking Crafter's Companion Heat Resistant Acetate, and I just, I've been having the best luck pulling out like scrap pieces of acetate lately, but it fits perfectly. I'm going to have to trim it down slightly. I'm going to use the scrapbook.com 1 8th. This is really thin. Um, double-sided adhesive and I just wrap that around the back of that card panel where the window is cut out where the moon is cut out <clears throat> it's very easy to do this and I happen to cut it to the perfect size relieve the release paper of its duties and put the acetate to create the window I do have to trim off the sides those little corners kind of stick out there but that little scrap piece works perfectly so after I trim off both of those corners that are sticking out on the edges, I grabbed my sequin stash. This is my shaker bits. This is it. This is all of my shaker bits. Um, at first I thought I would use these dark charcoal ones, but as at second glance, I thought maybe these purple ones would work. And I'm so glad that I did that because that's what I did choose to use. I'm using the Stampin' Up uh, foam strips. These are long, thin foam strips and they are perfect for stuff like this because it is easily manipulated around the circle and then I just use the rest to fill in the void of the rest of the panel there so it's all on the same plane same height same popped up -edness. and 
I'm using my little spoon to get out a couple scoops of sequins. They were a gift to me, so I'm not quite sure where they came from. And then I used some Lawn Fawn glue tube adhesive to adhere all of that down to my card base. Use some Scotch 3M foam tape to pop up my little bats very easily. Um, once they're all done, that is it. I did end up adding a little bit more sequins to the outside of the card in the final photos, but I think the card is really fun. I hope that you guys get into the Halloween spirit. I know that we're a few months away still. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video and please find your next stamp or myself on social media. We would love to see you there. Uh, from the ground, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs>